Okay, so I'm going to begin. We are doing the Cardinal Barn Quilt Pattern. Cardinal Barn Quilt Pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint in my voids. What I mean by void is the area that will remain white and the color I'm using is casement. Now, if you are new to painting barn quilts, I would highly suggest before you begin, let me just finish this up really quick. So I am not taping my um, barn quilt because I enjoy the rustic um, look and the rustic look does not mean that you do not have precise lines. It just basically means that um, you have very a little tad bit of variations within your lines. So if you're brand new, we're going to set our brush off to the side. I would highly suggest that you just mark, and we'll do it upside down, so you can see. So you're going to mark white where you want your area to remain white. And I want white here, so we're just going to go through and mark where we want white. Now this is going to be my pinwheel, so... Um, I want this to be green, so I'm going to put green, I'm going to do white, I'm going to do green, this is green, this is a light green, this is a dark green, and this is white, and we have white, 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 this is yellow, this is black, this is my dark red, dark red, this block right here is white, this is white, this is my dark green, this is white, this is my light green, this is white, this is my dark green, and this right here is my light green. This right here is my lighter red, this one right here is my lighter red, here is my dark red, here we also have my dark red. Here, this area right here is my dark red. This is my light red. Here, I want this. And then we are drawing a line, which I did forget. I do have a separate tutorial on drawing this. If you're interested in that. So this is my light red, this is my light red. Okay. And then we have right here, this is white, white, and white. Okay, so there we have it all marked out. And that makes it the easiest for remembering where you're gonna put your colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in, finish filling in all my areas that have my white. I do suggest that on a lot of times people just tell you put a, a dab of color um, where in your block. Um, if you're using a chalk paint or a mineral paint, I would not suggest putting a dab of color. In your block and the reason being is this paint is much thicker um, and so then you're gonna it's gonna create texture in your product in your um, block so I would not suggest going ahead so the lettering of your blocks really help um, distinguish without going along and blocking what color it will be so it's kind of like a paint by number um, but it's just we are painting geometric shapes 
instead of um, objects, loose framed objects. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and paint in all of my white. So when you return, um, when I return, all of my white spaces will be filled in and I am going to go ahead and paint my border white as well. So feel free um, to pause this video at this time and follow along and just paint all your white spaces in. See you in a few. Okay, so thank you for joining me. Yours should look like this when you are done painting all of your white areas. Now, you'll notice the white areas are a little bit blotchy and I am going to go back and paint them again. But I personally like to um, go in and paint my other areas. And this is my light green that I'm going to be using. And this is Bedford. Um, but I like to go in and paint my other areas and treat my white as just a base at this time. That way, if I get anything out of the lines, um, I can very easily clean it up with my white and the white that I'm using today is casement. Casement um, is one of the few um, truest, let's put that right there, um, whites for fusion mineral paint. So it is a very um, true white and it does require a couple of coats generally. So if yours shows through no worries about that. Um, we will be able to clean that up very easy. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is just taking my Bedford and I'm painting in those areas. That's a light green. This just gives it a little bit of texture. If your kit did not include, you did not order an extra green for your kit, um, feel free to contact me. We do have these trial size um, for purchase on my website, which is um, willis-farms-llc. So I am a retailer for fusion mineral paint. Um, so you'll be able to find a variety of different colors on there, we carry 52 different paint colors, actually. Um, I really enjoy using Fusion for my barn quilts um, because it is does already have the top coat built in. You don't have to worry about um, adding a top coat on there. And also this paint type of paint is a mineral paint, so it does cure hard. Um, and it has no VOCs. So if you do place it in your room and you are concerned, health conscious, um, this paint has been str stringently tested and um, can say no um, VOCs. It has such small amounts that it um, can claim no VOCs. So we're going to continue painting this area, um, this one and this one. So um, join me when you are done painting those four blocks. Okay, so I have now finished those areas. As you can see, hopefully you get a good view. Um, as you can see, now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to paint the dark green areas and we're painting those bayberry. And once again, we are just going to go following our lines. And we are, um, I like to put my brush up against my edge. Um, and if you're using a sponge brush or a flat edge brush, those are the most beneficial, most beneficial. Um, easiest to work with.
And if you do kind of get out of your lines, don't worry about it. We can always go back and just clean that line straight up. Um, the great thing about working with paint is you can always paint over it. So you just let it dry and then just go completely back over it. I did say that I was going to paint my border white. I'm actually trying to decide if I want to paint my border white or if I want to paint it um, a different color. I haven't quite, I might just paint it a color. I haven't decided yet. But we're just painting our pinwheels. So this darker green is the bayberry. Once again, when I say don't worry about getting out of the lines, um, because we can always go back and clean that up without a problem. With painting, you do want the least amount of paint on your brush. You don't want to paint heavy. Um, a lot of techniques when you're painting landscapes or um, other types of painting, um, it's okay what I like to call heavy, where your brush is loaded with paint. Um, it's easier to blend and easier to pull your paint. But when you're doing geometrical paint, especially... Um, you want to paint with the least amount of paint possible. Um, it's a drier painting style, but you want to paint with the least amount of possible paint on your brush um, so you can have those precise lines and um, not as much texture within your spaces. So I'm going to finish these areas up and I will join you again. Okay, so we now have all of our bayberry and greens completed. And so I'm going to put in my black and my yellow. So this is um, Prairie Sunset Yellow. It is a very creamy yellow and we're gonna use that color for his beak. Um, the colorful birds, the colorful cardinals are the males and the more muted cardinals, more muted birds, are the females. So um, I think that's really cool. If you notice, I finished up my um, gold for his beak and his black for the highlight on his eye. Now we're going to use our cranberry and we're going to paint in our dark red areas. I like to paint this area in first, um, primarily so I don't forget it. And a trick that I like to do is always try to get my brush tip um, to be even. It really helps when you're lining your brush up against those lines, even though I am lining this up against a dark red, but I just want to show you. If your brush tip is even, then it really helps get nice crisp lines on those edges. Um, you can do that by dabbing straight down into your um, paint and then just pulling off your paint. Um, you're going to want to make sure that all of your bristles are um, put together and there is no gaps in your bristles. And remember, if you have any overages um, or oops, we do not need to worry about that because we can always go back and paint over any lines that might have spilled over. No stress. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to fill in all the areas that I marked dark red. And we are using cranberry. 
I will see you in a few. Okay, now we have filled in all of our dark red. Um, if you feel necessary, you can go over it again if you see some variance in your color. Um, reds generally do need to um, go over a couple of times, especially the lighter reds. So we're going to finish this up with our lighter red, which is for York Red. And we will need to do a couple of coats with this red, making sure that when you are painting, um, you do not put too much paint on your surface because you don't want that added texture. Um, you want as smooth of a surface as you can. So make sure that you are not overloading your brush um, with too much paint. If you notice any gobs or where paint has piled up, then you have too much paint on your brush and you're going to need to dab that off onto a the corner of your um, paint container. Um, so we're just going to finish this up really fast and then um, I'm going to go around my white again and I feel that my white needs to be a richer color so I will probably grab my raw silk and go over my white um, just so it's a richer color not such a stark white okay so um, continue to paint your fork york red where you have marked light red or l are and we will join again in a bit okay so if you haven't yet um, finish up your light red areas now this does have a pretty good coverage on my reds but I will go ahead and go over it because I can still see my lines and where I marked on that so um, we're just gonna let this dry for 10 minutes um, you can tell your project is completely dry when you can lay your hand on it and it feels um, same temperature as room temperature. If your paint feels cold, um, then your paint is not dry and you will not want to paint over an area that is wet um, because it will have a tendency to actually um, peel up and be textured. So we're just going to let this dry and um, we'll do our second coat and I will go ahead and go over this with a richer raw silk so I'm going to show you how that is done as well okay we'll be back in a bit hi welcome for joining me again so we're gonna go over um, our raw silk um, on our white and you'll notice the difference immediately the raw silk is a much warmer color um, so I want to show you what an impact putting a warmer white with our cardinal how it kind of correlates um, it complements a lot better than our um, casement base that we originally painted Not that the casement is bad, um, so, but it is such a stark white. Um, and I think, anytime I think of cardinals, I think of winter, I think of cloudy skies, or, um, you know, unless you have snow covered grounds but the raw silk does have a warmer undertone to it so I'm just going to finish up everywhere that I painted casement and I'm going to cover it with raw silk okay so if you can tell it has now a richer hue to it um, meet, meeting a much more um, 
warmer tone. So now I'm going to go um, over my reds again um, just so I have a very solid um, pigment on my red and also making sure that it is covering all of my areas. So once again, I'm just gonna go over the dark and then I'm gonna go over the light and then any touch-ups that I see necessary. That's my puppy. Um, her name is Bella, so please in the comments, please say hi to Bella. She always likes to hear from people. She likes to hear where they're coming from, like where they're watching from. So um, let her know that you're watching her and tell her that you said hello. Okay. Oh, and also, also, don't forget to subscribe. Um, click below, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Um, and um, let us know what you think. Okay, we'd love to improve our barn quilt painting. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you've enjoyed watching us, um, we're truly blessed by that. So we're gonna finish this up and go over it. And then we will see you next time as we paint a blue jay. Thanks again and hope you tune in. Have a creative day. Okay, bye.